They spray our skies Interact with, these with the magnetic toxic chemicals. Space travel is space Mars rover is a Lund, and welcome to the first Debunk the Funk Quick Shot. Every once in a while, a Debunk the Funk previous episode might have a supplemental add-in or footnote, if you will. That's what a quick shot like this is meant to be. In episode number one of Debunk the Funk, we were examining the flat earth idea and how it has some very unsatisfactory and very much conflicting explanations as to what's happening when the sun sets or when the sun rises. I performed two demonstrations using a cardboard cutout representation of the sun. In the first demonstration, I stood on some train tracks with this sun, not recommended, and then moved the sun away into the distance. In the second demonstration, I stood on a curved overpass as I moved away. These were not experiments, mind you, but demonstrations. They were meant to demonstrate how a visually round object would look if it moved away from the viewer and how a visually round object would look to a viewer if between the viewer and the object, if within the line of sight, there was a bulge due to curvature. We then witnessed a real sunset with Lake Michigan as our horizon, and then we compared the empirical evidence of what a sunset actually looks like to the two demonstrations. See, according to the flat earth idea, the reason why we see what we see when a sun sets is because the sun is relatively close to a disc-shaped earth and that the sun eventually sets each day because it is moving too far away from the viewer to be seen. And still to this day, I've never heard a satisfying, non-conflicted answer as to how an object's bottom half can be too far away to be seen while its top half remains completely in sight. Well, a recent comment on the Debunk the Funk Episode 1 video made a claim, and I thought I'd be a good sport and test it out. Here it is. Me cool, writes, You are just ridiculous. Did you notice that you put your camera higher than your sun? Of course, from this point of view, the perspective is very different from, let's say, one centimeter up from the rail track. But I'm sure you know it. You just want to fool people, isn't it? Well, first off, no, I'm not trying to fool anyone. When I do experiments or demonstrations, I show exactly what I did, so that way if anybody wants to reproduce what I did, they could. And I also hope that, in showing that I'm willing to take the time and effort to actually put this to the test, I hope that that bears testament as to me not trying to pull the wool over anyone's eyes. If I was out here trying to fool people, I don't think I'd be willing to do this. Now also, I'm not going to do this for every comment that comes my way that makes a claim. Hey, I'm a busy guy. And also, bear in mind, me cool or anyone else could always just test this out on their own. Though, again, I don't recommend train tracks. But I also thought that this was a really good opportunity just to showcase that when it comes to science, one of the things that makes it stay healthy is that it invites questioning. Things should be questioned and things should be put to the test. Plus, I still happen to have my cardboard sun cutout from a few years ago, so I thought, why not? To be fair, in the flat earth model, their relatively close sun is always above the viewer. And so, yes, to make the demonstration more accurate to the flat earth model, the view, the camera, should be lower in altitude than the sun. My original demonstration, though, it really was just about trying to show how a visually round object looks as it recedes away from the viewer. And I'd still say that it was effective in showing that. But the commenter claims that the perspective would be very different if the camera view was approximately one centimeter off the ground. So, let's indulge the commenter and go perform the demonstration once again. Let's test the claim out. Here we go. Alright, so now we got both cameras turned on, one in the normal position, one down at level with the train tracks. Here we go! Here's my starting position. Now I start moving back and I was taking about 15 steps or so on the train tracks every time I turned around and showed what the sun looked like. Here's the first new position I got to. I move away some more. Here's the second new position, so third position total that I got to. 
You can see that as I move away, our sun is getting smaller and smaller, just like last time. Here's another position. And here's the furthest and final position that I got with our sun. All right, let's head on back and see what we got. Okay, so viewer, what do you think? Now, me cool never went into any detail as to what very different meant. So I guess we'll have to leave that up to you. Certainly the perspective is different, but would you classify this as being very different? Was I setting up my camera height the way I did to try to fool people? Again, the point of the original demonstration was just to show how a visually round object looks as it recedes away from the viewer. I think the original demonstration does that fine. I think the one here on the left still does it fine. And I think the one on the right does it fine as well. Whether we're looking at it from the perspective of being above the object moving away or below it here on the right, we still see two major differences about these demonstrations than what we see during an actual sunset. First major difference. When an object's moving away from us, the object does become smaller. During an actual sunset, the sun is not visually getting any smaller. And the second major difference. Unlike an actual sunset, no matter which height our camera is at, above the makeshift sun or below it, at no time is the bottom half missing while the top half remains fully in view. Hey, thanks for checking out this Debunk the Funk quick shot. I'm Rich Lund, and I'm here to remind you, the world needs critical thinkers. Make sure you're one of them. See you next time.